In this video, we will be showing you how to log into and navigate the CPIMS Plus. This is the login page for the CPIMS Plus. The URL shown here is particular to each country implementation and will be where you will go to log in. Every user will receive a personal username and password from their administrator and can use that to log in into the system. Note that the password will need to be changed by the user at the first login. You see there is a username and a password box. Click in the username box and type your unique username. Then enter your password in the field below and click on login. For this demo, we will be logging in as a case worker. The header navigation is the dark bar across the top of the screen in which you navigate to the different tabs you have access to. This will be different for a case worker or a manager or another child protection case management staff and will depend on your context. In this example, you can see the home page or dashboard, cases, tracing requests, incidents, matches and bulk export downloads. It also has a quick search field that can help you find a specific case quickly. The dashboard or home page is where you can quickly find information for your cases. Depending on the work you do in your organization, it contains a number of different types of information which can include case load summaries, cases for which approval has been requested or cases that are pending approval cases by risk level, etc. The case worker dashboard will be different from the managers and from the administrator. We will be showing you an example of a case worker dashboard. If you have any access to cases but you're not a manager or an administrator, you will see some variation of this dashboard. The dashboard is divided into two main sections, one for cases, as you can see here, and one for services. The first section begins with a few key numbers total number of cases, total new cases, new means anything which has not been edited since its creation, transfers awaited acceptance, new incidents, service implemented, total referrals, new referrals. Below this you see two columns. The column to the left shows the number of total and new cases subdivided by risk level, high, medium and low. The column to the right shows all the number of pending, rejected and new approvals, meaning either assessment, case plans or case closure forms that as a case worker were sent to the manager for approval. The right of your screen, the dashboard, will show one or two lists of flat cases. The purpose of flagging is for a case worker, him or herself or a manager, to flag an issue, a reminder, a question or a suggestion on a case. These lists will keep you reminded of pending flags. In this case, you can see there are three flags here. The first list shown above consists of the cases which we have flagged most recently. The second list shown below is a list of your cases which someone else has flagged and only displays for the case and admin dashboard. Since managers often do not even have the ability to make cases, it makes no sense for them to have a list of flag cases which they own. Next to the Home tab in the navigation bar, you may see this calendar icon. Clicking on this icon will take you to the task view. Here you will see all of the pending and overdue tasks present for all your cases. These tasks can include assessments, can include case plans, follow-ups, and services. As you can see, tasks that are upcoming have their due dates in black font, while those which are overdue have their due dates in red font and have all small alert symbols next to their case links. Next to the different tasks, you might also be able to see a small clock icon, which indicates that the task is due shortly. Clicking on any of the case links will take you to the case which needs the task to be performed. It is important to understand where the due dates for these tasks come from, as well as which tasks are considered incomplete. These are linked to specific dates that were input in the forms. For example, 
if we click on this task, we will be able to see that the due date comes from the date of the assessment, 19th of July, and will be displayed here. The next tab in the header navigation is the Cases tab. As a case worker here, you can see all the cases that you're responsible for. Here you are able to see a case list overview. Here a manager would see all the cases of all the case workers they manage. Here you're able to select one or more cases and perform different actions. This will be further demonstrated in the other video, for example, flag cases or filter cases according to certain criteria. If there are filter options you use often, you can save them by clicking on Save, so that you can use that specific combination of filter options easily in the future. This is also particularly useful for a manager. In the Tracing Request tab, you can see a similar overview of cases, but then there will be tracing requests for the tracing of missing children. The access depends on who handles tracing requests in your context. From a tracing request, people with high-level access to both cases and tracing requests in the CPMS Plus will be able to try and find a match. This will be further demonstrated in the Tracing and Matching video. The Matches tab shows you the potential matches that you have requested through the Tracing Request tab. Again, this is only for authorized users. You have now completed logging in and navigating the CPMS tutorial. You can find more video tutorials like this on Primero Support Hub.